In this video, guys, we're going to look at which of the firms out there have the biggest or largest assets under management. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you and investors, warm welcome to you too. So, okay, so which companies or firms have the largest AUM, assets under management. Now, asset managers basically are companies that will put capital to work for individuals or institutions. You may have a company that only works with large institutions, charities, that kind of stuff. And you may also have a company that works with everybody, individual investors with a few thousand dollars or pounds to spend. They're across the board. The idea is though that they will put your money to work for you. They decide which funds to put it in, which stocks to put it in potentially, or depending on how, how where we are on the scale here, which funds they allocate it to, or how they ind allocate individual investments in a stock portfolio. It's basically done for you management on a, on a different scale, as we say, whether they're going right to small guys or the big guys. And it's a big, big business. Many of these companies, it's not just their business. They have another arm on as well. And you'll recognize some of them in a second. Some of them do other things as well. They tie in quite nicely and they, sometimes they compete, but sometimes they work together. But it's, it's, it's actually quite surprising to see how big some of these numbers are. Now, these are numbers that are um, valid as of this video, so whatever the video date is on the upload, give or take, you know, they're as close as I can get them with a bit of research. Um, but the numbers are astonishing, they're, they're hefty. Um, it's interesting to see. Anyway, let's have a go, guys. Number one, BlackRock, $6.3 trillion assets under management. That is not an insubstantial sum. Um, basically, 25% of that comes from their iShares ETFs. So, you know, these ETFs that you see that maybe it's a buying a basket of stocks, they're allocating that in that. And even though I guess potentially you are you're buying what you, you know what you're buying there, they're still actually managing that by adjusting their portfolio and making sure that that ETF has the right percentage of what they offer. So even though it's very structured and it's very obvious what you're getting, the whole thing is it still needs a lot of work behind it. So that's 25% of their business, BlackRock, biggest player out there by quite a big margin, actually. Uh, then we've got the Vanguard Group, 5.1 trillion. They do a lot of trackers as well, did a lot of low cost, kind of you can track the market at a low cost type of thing. And 5.1 trillion as well, guys. I mean, that's still an impressively large number. We're talking some, some serious change here. Number three, Charles Schwab. Most of us are familiar with Charles Schwab. They've got that discount brokerage, uh, specifically in the US, although they're probably available in the UK too. Um, 3.36 trillion, that doesn't include as far as I'm aware, it doesn't include people who've got money in and they're buying their own, deciding what shares to buy on their own. This is people who put it in to a mutual fund or to something and let Charles Schwab manage it for them. So 3.36 trillion under management there. JP Morgan, 2.78 trillion. Again, pretty decent number. We all know uh, JP Morgan. Fidelity, 2.5 trillion. Um, pretty decent number there too. State Street Global, 2.4 trillion assets under management. What have we got here? Number seven, Allianz, 2.2 trillion dollars. Uh, that's German company, so they've got a, I think that's the first probably non-US company on the list. And then BNY Mellon, uh, 1.8 trillion, back in New York, 1.8 trillion. So this is a lot of money, assets under management. It just shows you how, you know, if we look at this from a perspective of what's the point of this, apart from being quite interesting, if you're a nerd like me and market nerd and you like this kind of stuff, give it a thumbs up, by the way, for the market nerds who really have breathed the markets. I think it's quite interesting, but it also makes you think that when people are pulling money out, if you think of this, if only a small 1% of people pull their money out in very quick succession, these guys are all gonna be in predominantly the same thing. So while the money's flowing in, the market's running nicely, if that money gets pulled out quick, these guys have gotta pull it out quick as well. And you can see how that does affect ultimately you know, the severity of down moves sometimes. And also obviously it affects how long bull markets can go. If, if you're just pushing money into this, you know, a billion, a billion, keep putting billions in as it all flows in from wherever it's coming from, they have to put that to work. You can see how them, them buying stocks or them buying specific assets cause those assets to just chug higher and higher and higher. And conversely, as I just said, when people are need that money back, maybe it's probably the last thing 
um, or the first thing that comes out if they need it, it's the last thing that goes in with spare cash. When they're pulling that money out, and a lot of people are doing it for whatever reason that may be, we don't have to talk about catalyst here, but for whatever reason that may be, you can see that just a small percentage of that, because let's say they were pulling out some of the top 10 stocks, if there were, if it was a stock-based uh, fund, and not all gonna be, gonna be some bonds, gonna be some commodities, I get that, but you can see how, how quickly that money's gotta come out, uh, and if there's no real demand as, as well, because for whatever reason, the catalyst has caused some sort of bearish sentiment, you can see how we get these sometimes unusual downdrafts and they sort of hold steady and then you get the bear market. So I think it's quite interesting. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of money floating around, it just shows you, um, still surprises me the amount of money that's knocking around with these kind of, sm they're large companies obviously, but we're not talking uh, governments here. We've got some sovereign wealth funds out there that are doing some pretty decent size as well. Uh, anyway, guys, those are the biggest, those are the firms with the largest assets under management. Eight for you. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.